This next fly will be a Bar's Visidun, which is a pattern developed by John Barr to use as a small strike indicator style fly that also has a chance of getting eaten. This is a bushy little, little dry fly that's hatch specific. You can tie it in blueing olive, PMD, melon quill colors uh, to match any mayfly. But it's a buoyant, wide profile fly that's got a lot of, lot of uh, surface area to it, so it'll hold up a dropper. Pretty neat little fly to tie, sort of reminiscent of the old thorax style patterns. To start with, we're going to start with the Tiemco 101 ring eye dry fly hook. The thread is going to be olive or gray, or in this case, olive dun colored, eight dot thread. The tail is going to be spade hackles, and I'll show you where to get these from your rooster hackle neck. Spade hackle fibers for the tail. The abdomen is bluing olive colored, super fine dubbing. The wing will be a light dun poly yarn. And the hackle will be medium blue done dry fly hackle. That can be necks or saddles. To start on this fly, I'm going to put the thread about midpoint on the hook and I'm going to wrap back to the bend. Now when I get to the bend on this hook, I want to build just a small nub of thread and I'm going to pile up four or five or perhaps eight or ten, depending on the size of the hook, turns of thread to make just a little bump of thread right at the apex of the bend. So I've just built a small diameter little nub of thread there at the bend of the hook and my thread's hanging right at the front edge. Now for the tail, we're going to use a spade hackle and everyone asks where to get a spade hackle from. On your dry fly necks, at the widest point here on the edges are some feathers that are a little more oddly shaped than the rest. They're a little wider. They're not the long, slender, dry fly shaped feathers a little wider than everything else. But what these feathers have are some really long, stiff barbs. And that's a spade hackle. Um, every neck has them. They're still there. There's still plenty of them around. And the way we're going to prep this is I'm going to trim, in this case, the bottom half. You can see we've got some web coming through the center of the feather here. So I'm going to take the bottom half of the feather off. I'm going to grab the tip of the feather and I'm going to stroke these fibers out so they'll stand out from the stem. I've still got a little web down here at the base, so I'll strip those fibers off. And I've got these long, stiff fibers that I can use for tails. I can still, out of this feather, pretty easily get a dozen flies out of what's left of this feather. So a little goes a long way. It doesn't take very much for a tail. So I'm going to take my spade feather. I'm going to pull off, oh, six or eight individual fibers. And I want to get the tips as close to square as I can. I'll take this clump of fibers, I'm going to lay it in right in front of the, the nub of thread and put a, a turn of thread over it. They're about a shank length long is what I want. I'm going to put another turn right behind that turn. And you can see as I wrap back over those fibers, it spreads those tails out, sort of fans that tail, gives it a little more surface area. Once I'm happy with the, with the tail, and you can manually distribute that a bit if you need to, I'm going to wrap forward on the hook over the butt ends, and I'm going to run the thread all the way up to the index point and back again to about 60%. The wing on this fly is put in a little further back than is uh, usually conventionally done. I'm going to take a clump of light gray poly yarn. And I've got about a third of a strand here for this fly. I'm going to lay this in on top of the hook and I'll use a pinch wrap to capture it against the shank at about the 60% point. I'm going to lift these butt ends up and I'll trim these at an angle so I can wrap down over them and continue my taper down nice and neat. Now I'm going to jump my thread back up to the front edge of the wing. I'm going to build a little thread dam in front to stand this wing upright a little bit. So our wing's just in front of the halfway point there. Now I've selected a dry fly feather. In this case, it's a medium dun color. And I'm going to strip the bottom of the feather so I've got about a half a shank worth of bare stem. So I'll strip those fibers off of both sides. And I'm going to tie this feather in just in front of the wing, right tight to the hook shank, right up to the base of the wing. And you can see that this bare stem extends back to just a little more, or just a little short of the tail. It's not quite reaching to the tail. 
but I want that bare stem there. We're going to need that here in a minute. In the meantime, I'm just going to prop that feather up. It can kind of set up next to the wing for the time being. Now we're going to dub the body. I'm going to draw out a little bit of this blueing olive colored super fine dubbing. And you can see we're already building up a fair bit of bulk with just the thread. So we're not going to need a lot of dubbing to contribute to this. We just want to kind of texture the body. Very thin layer of dubbing. I'm going to work back so that my first turn of dubbing is right at the base of the tail. And I'm going to work forward relatively level up to just about the halfway point on the hook. And at this point I'm going to grab my hackle feather and lay it down along the hook as well. I'll continue dubbing forward over that bare stem right up to the base of the wing. I'm going to pull the wing back and I'm going to continue dubbing in front of the wing. But I want to stop. I want to leave about a 20 to 25 percent of the hook shank up here at the just behind the eye of bare, bare metal there. So we've got a relatively slender abdomen and then up near the wing we've got a little bit thicker thorax. Now one of the things that John came up with to toughen this fly up is to wrap the hackle over a wet base of vinyl cement. Vinyl cement is a, a flexible cement that doesn't dry hard but is very sticky and really anchors things down. So I'm going to take a small drop of vinyl cement. I'm going to put it right at the base of the wing. I'll go both front and back and I'll let a little of that soak down into the dubbing and the base of the wing. Now I'm going to grab my hackle feather in my pliers and you can still see I've still got a little bit of bare stem here. I'm going to use that to line up my first turn just as that body starts to get a little bigger diameter there behind the wing. And I'm going to make about two turns behind the wing. I'm going to make the next turn right in front of the wing. And you want to do this while the cement is still wet so it'll actually glue the feather down. I'm going to lift the feather straight up, come up and over with the thread and clip it off. Now I'm going to dub just a little bit of a head in front of here. I've got one stray hackle fiber. So I'm going to come back in with just another little touch of the super fine dubbing. And I'm going to dub this from the hook eye back up to the base of the hackle. And this is just going to kind of finish off that taper that we built coming down from the front of the wing. I'll whip finish my thread there. Trim that off. And here before it gets too dry, I like to use my dubbing brush to do this. I'm going to spread this wing out a little bit and spread it into a sort of a 180, maybe not quite 180. but a little wider profile, sort of like a comparadon, and I'll trim that just a touch higher than the hackle is. I want that spring, that wing spread across the top. The cement, once it dries, will settle that all down inside there, so everything kind of locks in, in in place there. Let's square this up just a touch. You want to be careful not to trim your hackle. Now one final thing to do on this fly is I'm going to trim just a notch out of the base of the hackle here. And I'm going to take the fly out of the vise to do this, so hopefully this will still show well. Um, I'm going to set the, the fly upside down and I'm going to come in just across the bottom of the hook and trim some of those hackle fibers out. Just to get a little notch. Not completely flat. See if we can get a front angle on that. That just sets the fly a little lower in the surface, but still gives it some surface area so it'll float well. This is a great little, very durable fly, um, very visible, uh, will hold up a dropper. Good fly to use when you're fishing a much smaller, less visible fly behind it or a slightly sunken emerger. This is really a good fly and a variety of colors that you can tie it in as well.